All right. So, hi, Jonathan. Hello. Hi. I hope the Northern Lights. Oh, that's great. Put you off. Yeah, I... Uh, put me off a bit, but... No, it's lovely. I, I was in Norway. We didn't manage to get the opportunity to... You can go and try to see them, but there's never a guarantee. Yeah. So did you see them? No, no. Yeah, you have to go out. But we were... Um, I think you, you need to go further north than most of the uh, urban areas. <laughs> Yeah. Or somewhere higher, I can't remember which, but wherever, where we were, you had to go further. You can see and them in Scotland too, apparently. It's, like, it's just however far north you yeah. go. Yeah, I, yeah. Does it depend on the, um, uh, the local conditions or is it more uh, uh, earth, sun sort of? D determination. Do, do you see what I mean? If you're high up on a mountain, are you more likely to see them? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. That's <laughs> beyond my field of expertise. I guess if you're high up on a mountain, you can see you can see more stuff. That's but yeah, that's my <laughs> that's the extent of my knowledge. But it's beautiful, beautiful yes. stuff, even yeah. digital digital world digital world what? spirit world of spirit. yeah i mean it just reminds us that it's there and it helps to evoke and if you can you know with your imagination just uh kind of uh, uh, you know it makes me think wow how, something like that happening the sky turns green and, and kind of shimmers and yeah what, i mean why not I it's like there. uh it, it does help us at least to, to have some kind of eurythmic some kind of flowing form maybe to do something you know there's all this the, the fear of the digital world but i mean it's still beautiful i mean i okay maybe i'm a bit of a magpie and i like sparkly things it's and representing i always, I always have that. done yeah. But... yeah yeah i mean it's it's becoming more and more the world of experience for people and i don't know is would it be less if you sort of experience the northern lights only digitally and you thought but it might you know in it might stimulate someone to go i'd like to go and see it for real and and, and i think there obviously you would gain more of an impression if you were open to it because you're in a vast open expanse you know you can turn around and see the whole scars that's the that's not the contained yeah, I'm sure. thing. I mean, it's like the discussion, if you listen to, you know, you listen to a recording of of a concert or classical music, and it's completely different to see it in reality or to see a play, if you see a play in reality or if you see it on a, on a screen, and it's a very subtle thing. Um, but it, but it, if you missed it, if you miss that play, it's great to get a recording of it if you're into that. Yeah. Well, it's still, I mean, it's just wonderfully convenient, isn't it? I can, and it, it, you can still use your imagination and try and go into the thing that is being conveyed or described. I mean, the words are still there. They're still unique that we're saying to each other. And okay, yeah. we're talking about something, an image that we can see, and it's a it's it's a representation of something real. Yeah, it's and it's not... like a little bit of green in your painting just behind your left ear. Here, oh here, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Is that the green snake or? No, I mean, it's funny you say that because um, what I what I love about the art that um, Rudolf Steiner said, hey, look, check this out, is, for example, watercolours. Instead of like getting a dry piece of paper and you smear 
wet paint on it. You get a wet piece of paper and you put wet color on it and all colors come alive more in, in, in the in moisture, yeah. in, the, in the light. So I always like that and it, then they move. So that effect behind you of the Northern Lights, that's always what I'm trying to sort of hoping towards with the pictures is that they're not just a static thing. It's suggesting movement, like you said, this rhythmic expression yeah. of something that cannot be fixed. Yeah, that, that is something <laughs> wonderful to do, isn't it? That when you do the that wet, what do, you, what do they call it? Wet, wet on wet. Wet, wet on, on wet. wet, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very beautiful thing. I mean, if you don't need to go and do the Northern Lights. You can just do that in the safety of your own home. Absolutely. Without needing to book an Airbnb for a thousand Swedish Corona. Or... Yeah, and maybe sit, sit, sit on a cold lake for a night. With a hot and just, chocolate. Yeah, and just see some crisp stars. In the flu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get stuck in your log cabin for a week anyway <clears throat> so we were going to talk about what we're we going to talk about today we're going to talk about 19 uh 1922 yeah. and 2022 exactly that was one thing um so i i just wanted to bring up that subject first of all because of the night because of the events of 1922 with Steiner going over to Britain and those the economics course of lectures that he gave and also bearing in mind that this is still in light of 1920 and 1920 the relation between 1920 and 2020 and of course immediately maybe i'll just throw in those just to clarify that 1920 treaty of versailles which which is the official implementation of the treaty of versailles i know people will then say yeah but it was 1919 the treaty of versailles yeah but the actual <laughs> official in craft sets and as they you know the actual official was that when they all came together and you know certain countries were allowed in and turkey who fought weren't invited etc i can't remember the exact details was that was that well, the, the, the uh this is the this is then on the 10th of january it comes into official effect that's the date of law 10th of january 1920 so is that when they say, right, Germany, you're to blame for everything. You have guilt of reparations and this is what you're going to pay back. Is that or is it? Are you... Yeah, it's setting yeah. up that that whole system, which then leads to the the post. Today. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, cut to, let's just cut to the chase. <laughs> oh, yeah. That leads to the rise of Nazi Germany, World War Two. 1945, so new world, yeah. new world yeah. order. Yeah. So in in 1922, there's still the Bolshevik socialist experiment going on. So that was a Western experiment injected into Russia because they, well, one reason they knew it, they couldn't try it in the West, West West, but also you know to determine future control of Russia. That's the Bolshevik experiment. That leads then to the National Socialist experiment injected into Germany. So, you know, that's very much to do with keeping Germany. Yeah, and Germany it's also, you've and, also got a new Russia deal Japan. with Roosevelt out in, in America. So you've got, you've got almost similar socio-political socio impulses in the East, the Middle, and the West, yeah, reflected in Germany, Russia, and America in those three aspects. So what right. we what what we need there's I mean there's there's uh, we don't want to bore people with going over things you know that are written in untold books. I mean there's there's okay. uh, 
So yeah, it's just I like interesting because I, I think it then all of that just to follow that thread through yeah. leads to the great reset, which I, I think in a way is like the the, the third major great social experiment, but this one's a global one. Yeah, well, that's interesting how those three, if you said that they were like three experiments and then like we were talking about previously, I don't think it's, I don't think that these dates are just plucked out of thin air. So the fact that the implementation of what happened after at the beginning of 2020 exactly 100 years after the official implementation of the Treaty of Versailles. I don't think that that's a coincidence. You have then the, the basis for a new system being kind of rolled out with the, not, the Great Reset. 2020. Yeah. Klaus Schwab writes the Great Reset in summer of 2020, where everything is laid out. And then a lot of what we've seen since then has been actually written about and laid out in in those policy documents so of the united nations and the you know that they that this is a, a well thought out uh plan for changing the economic system and then we have to deal with the sort of the chaotic um events on the ground um that are then communicated to us on a daily basis so that's the i i think it's important to recognize and i'd like to go right into to the anthroposophical side of that with the 100 years thing because we've got 100 years from 1920 to 2020 and then this year we have the 100 years from 1922 to 2022, which is 100 years from when Rudolf Steiner was giving these first associative economics. Yes. So we're seeing kind of like two impulses. One, it feels quite uncomfortable and quite restrictive because it's a, a group of very few, relatively few, trying to structure things for everyone else. And then there's Rudolf Steiner impulse and people um, working with him and so forth, which is a completely different <laughs> impulse, one where everyone is invited, everyone's exactly. a player. That, that, and that's what I find exciting. Like if we say, well, why, you know, why on earth would we even be doing this talk? You will, I think that there's, although there's a lot of reasons to be um, sorrowful, about what's been what has gone on in the world in the last two years i think there's also a lot of excitement precisely because of this or potentials of excitement let's not get carried away with ourselves but excitement about opportunity yeah that there would be an opportunity to connect with this idea that we don't leave everything up to the 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 the, the philosopher kings or the a few the few billionaires who want who have the power to determine things this it's a awakening i hope and the a kind of empowerment of of we ourselves to try and get educated about what's going on about what we can do about self employment about initiatives and all of this is what actually Steiner was talking about he just didn't have time to bring this into effect he died in 1925 and many of these impulses were from 1920 to when he died and again we have to remember that the first Gautianum was burnt down yeah. in 1920 and this was a in 1920 exactly this oh, sorry was in 19 um 22 23 Eve, 1922 yeah, yeah. it's opened in 1920 that's the point i right, wanted that, to make. Yeah. So you had treaty of versailles on the one hand and the first gotianum being opened i mean what a wonder what a great distinction between the two <laughs> <Treaty of> versailles 
and the opening of the first go to Arnhem. And if you if you ever wanted a clearer expression of you have to choose a side. Yeah. yeah. Like the Treaty of Versailles, all, all, all these guys in in their in their somber suits and you know that they, they, they go to their clubs in the evening and what can we do to divide everything up and d- d- decide the fate of nations? Yeah. And then this great artistic marvel yeah. that is, you know, for people to come and develop themselves so that they can help everyone else. Oh no. Oh well, hopefully Jonathan will rejoin us.